Hi, I'm Ken Collins of Bad Shoe Productions. Behind me is a uh, 96 Thunderbird with a 4.6 liter engine. It's on the MN12 platform. Uh, you've seen this car actually in a couple of my videos. I did a video on uh, um, degreeing the camshafts on a 4.6 and also in my full length video on repairing a 4R70W transmission uh, the transmission actually came out of this car. Now I have a sister car to this one. It's a green Thunderbird. That's a 97. 96 and 97 are virtually identical. And uh, in that video I show how to put a PI intake on a non-PI uh, 4.6 liter engine. Uh, it also was my daily driver. I did race it some. I know totally bone stock with you know, street tires, open rear. Um, it went, you know, high 15s at, you know, 80 some miles an hour. You know, really no race car. But I did put um, 373 gears in it, a traction lock, and some drag radials on it. And of course, I, you know, put the PI intake on it. That put it in the mid 15s to the lower 15s when the air was real good, you know, at uh, about 90 miles an hour. Uh, that's as far as I went with that. That it was my daily driver. You know, it's a complete full interior car, air condition. You know, uh, you know, it's just a stock vehicle otherwise. And of course, the MM12 platform is pretty heavy. I mean, it's well over 3,500 pounds, I'm sure. On this car, I went a step further. Uh, I took uh, what I learned on the green car and I added a few extra things. Now this has a 410 gear in it, traction lock, and I've raced it with drag radials on 16-inch um, uh, Thunderbird wheels. And um, it's, uh, the only real big difference is that I do have PI heads on this one. It's still the stock short block, but I have stock uh, PI heads. I think the only thing I did to it is I put some new valve seals in it. Uh, the heads actually came out of an Explorer, I believe, and I have some Cushman uh, Stage 1 camshafts. Again, you know, I showed a video on how to uh, uh, degree the cams. Now, with that combination, and probably one of the more important things that I've done since then, is that I have a quarter horse controller on the processor, so it's a, it allows me to do some tuning. Uh, on the uh, car and you, you know you absolutely need to do that to get you know to take full advantage of what you're dealing with uh, after all you're talking about a pretty small engine it's only 281 cubic inch on a very heavy car so you need every advantage you can get now the car on average goes uh, 1470s about 94 miles an hour that's still with a stock torque converter now since I've raced the car I have up the converter. I have a 3200 stall converter in it now, and I haven't raced it since then. So, conservatively, you know, maybe it took a tenth off. You know, it's hard to say. But my big next project on it is to put a supercharger on it. Now, I've already ordered the supercharger. Um, it hasn't come yet. Uh, it's the uh, the lead time has been delayed twice. They're talking about January now. Um, and this year, 2020, I'm afraid there's just so many things that's happened, including manufacturing, uh, people having, you know, trouble, you know, getting parts and stuff like that and, uh, materials. And that's, you know, probably why there's a, you know, backlog on their products. But what I want to do in this video, it'll be a series of videos. I just want to tell you a little bit about, uh, what I've done to the car and what I've done to kind of get it prepared to take the supercharger. Now, this car, I'm a little bit more serious about a street strip car than my old daily driver. I've taken the air conditioning off and I've removed the front sway bar. And that probably, you know, has taken 100 pounds off of it. But I didn't do it for weight savings. I did it really to make servicing it easier. Anybody who's did an oil change on a 4.6 liter in an MN12 Thunderbird knows that it's almost impossible to get that uh, oil filter off. And when you don't have the sway bar on it, it's right there out in the open, real easy to service. 
and without the air conditioning, um, you don't have the condenser on the front. But not having the condenser may come into play when I put the supercharger on. The one I'm getting is a non-intercooled version. But if I, at a later date, wanted to put an air-to-air intercooler on it, not having that con condenser on the front may be a, a real plus. Now, of course, no companies at this point make a, a uh, supercharger kit specifically for the Thunderbird. I think maybe in the early days, uh, uh, most of them did, but that was kind of short run because, after all, the Bird is you know, kind of an orphan car. So now the only kits available is, you know, of course, for the Mustang. Now, under the hood of this car relative to, say, a SN95 Mustang, it's pretty similar. But uh, there's enough differences that uh, to fabricate what I need to do to make it fit this car involves, uh, you know, a little bit of modification. And we'll get into that, you know, probably in a later video. Okay, let's go on over to the car. I'll lift the hood. I'll show you some things that I've already done to the car to get it to this point, and some of the things that I've done to prepare it to take the supercharger. Okay, you can see it looks pretty well stock. I do have some Ford Racing spark plug wires here. I have copper tip spark plugs. Uh, I think they're one uh, range colder than you know what would normally be in these uh, engines stock. Uh, I have upgraded to a 70 millimeter throttle body, um, which actually came off the Expedition, I believe, and the linkage does not really hook up correctly for a uh, Thunderbird and Mustang, so therefore I had to do some fabrication uh, to get the uh, throttle cable to hook up. I do not recommend doing that if you want to have a 70 millimeter throttle body, for goodness sakes, get an aftermarket one. You're, you're way ahead of the game. Um, the main changes I've done to this car to accommodate a supercharger is one thing I've added a boost gauge in the dash. This is the uh, map sensor for it right here. And uh, I put a larger mass air sensor on it. The stock mass air sensors on these uh, cars are pretty small, pretty restricted. If you go into a boost application, there's a whole lot more air going across there. Uh, because it's so small, it will not read it. You add more air, but the voltage uh, winds up topping out, and the processor can't see the extra air. So a big thing that needed to be done was to upgrade the mass air. This one right here is a stock replacement 80 millimeter unit for a lightning pickup. That should give me a little bit more headroom when it comes time to putting the supercharger on. The other thing is I changed the injectors. I went from the nine, 19 pound injectors to 39 pound injectors. So they're basically twice the size. Um, a friend gave me those injectors. I think they came out of a uh, Coyote motor. I'm not real sure. But, of course, the newer injectors have a different style connector on it. So, therefore, I had to get these adapters to, to adapt the newer style injectors to the older wiring harness. No real problem there. Uh, the bigger concern, of course, was when I did the upgrade to the mass air and the bigger injectors, I had to make some big changes in the tune using the quarter horse controller. And uh, frankly, that could be a video all by itself. There was a big learning curve there. You can do a lot of tunability with the uh, quarter horse, but it is a steep learning curve for that. However, I've got it all dialed in. I've added to the scaling, so when it goes into boost, it should be able to see that electrically and uh, adapt for it. Um, of course, obviously, once you put the supercharger on, there'll be a lot more tuning involved to get it dialed in. Now, with the Thunderbird platform under the hood, it's very much like the Mustang. The unit I'm getting is actually for a 99 Mustang, and 99 and earlier Mustangs have the same dress, let's say, as the Thunderbird. In other words, the position of the pulleys and the uh, tensioners and everything is exactly the way it is on this one. So there shouldn't be a whole lot of adapting there. Now, of course, the 99 uh, Mustang was a coil-on-plug car. So therefore, this area is where the supercharger will be. 
So this coil bank will have to be relocated, and I'll have to fabricate a uh, bracket. I'll probably have to mount it, you know, right about here or something like that. The biggest areas that I think that I will have to do a lot of modifications to is in the radiator area. The Thunderbird, the radiator is much closer to the engine, and the radiator is taller. So being taller and closer to the engine, that will probably be a concern. Uh, because I don't have air conditioning now, I don't have that condenser in the front, I may have some room to move the radiator forward a little bit. There is a chance that I might actually even be able to put the radiator under this radiator brace and, you know, have it on this side. Uh, I believe the radiator is probably a little too tall for that. Um, one of the solutions might be to go to a Mustang radiator, which is a little bit shorter. But that will have to be determined when I start building the project. So I think that's all I really want to show under the hood here. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching this first in a series of videos on how to install a supercharger for this car. I will go into detail when it comes to installing it. I've, you know, I've seen so many videos online, and a guy has all the parts laid out on the table, and then in the next scene, you see him tightening the belt, and, you know, he starts the engine. Well, I'm not going to do that. I am going to go into detail about putting it on this car, showing you the fabrication that I'll need to make it fit this car, and I'll probably go into a little bit of the tuning aspect of it once I get it installed. So thank you very much, and as always, good luck on your project.